Today we're looking at our top 10 favorite birds in the Wingspan European expansion of the 81 new cards in the mix. These are the ones we like the most. Welcome to Legendary Tactics. Part of the fun of choosing these cards is that we might have them on our list because they're really good cards, but they might also be cards that change the game dynamic and add interest to the gameplay. Cax, let's start with your number five. Yeah, so coming at number five for me is the Snowy Owl. Uh, I, I love that it's uh, it's got a fairly low cost of only two mice. Uh, it's got some flexibility with where you can put it. And uh, I really, the ability is just amazing. So you, uh, you draw one new bonus ability, then you gain a card or lay an egg. So you just got a lot of flexibility with this card. Yeah, you really love your bonus cards, don't you? Yeah, it's great. So the really cool thing for my number five, the teal color adds an interesting element to the game with end of round bonuses. So that's brand new in this edition. But the first bird that caught my interest was the black red start. And at the end of the round, you choose a habitat with no eggs in it. And then you lay one on each bird in that habitat. So uh, in the late game, it's not a very good card. But if you can get it down in the first round, I think you can scale your points over time. So since you likely won't get that many eggs early on let's assume maybe one egg in round one two eggs round two maybe jump to four eggs in round three and possibly even five eggs in round four that's an ideal circumstance but that's 12 points in an ideal world so downside high food cost it's worth zero points and it prevents you from laying eggs in one row so while it might not be the best card in the set it's it's really fun to add to the mix Cax, what's your number four yeah so my number four is the rough uh, I like this card because uh, of its cheapness. It's uh, a worm plus any other resource. Uh, it, it, uh, you can again has flexibility with uh, the habitat where you want to put it. It's got two of the three. Uh, you, and of course, the ability then is to tuck up to three cards from your hand behind the bird, and draw one card for each uh, card you've tucked. So you can, you get a lot of cards uh, put away. At the same time, uh, you get to draw new cards as well, so you're, you're getting points on both sides there. So I think that's just got a really great uh, uh, mechanic to it. Uh, now, it does only hold two eggs, which is not great, so there is there is a bit of a drawback there. But That's right, but he does have a really schnazzy neck ruff. Oh, indeed. <laughs> and any, uh, any, called, any bird called a ruff, you got to like, so... Yeah, it kind of looks like an old lady. Oh, jeez. But, uh, yeah, that sounds like a cool power play. So my number four is the Black-Headed Gull. It's worth three victory points. It lives in the wetland. It has a two food cost. It doesn't have high egg capacity at two, same as your rough, but what I love about it is that it allows you to steal one food of any type from an opponent and to add it to your supply. So this one could be a lot of fun to prevent an opponent from laying the bird they want. You know, you steal that one necessary food that they have, and you would just have to make sure that the food that you steal isn't in the bird feeder when you when you take it away from them. I mean, there is a chance for them to get it back, but you could also cost them an entire move. So I love that this card creates more interplay between players mats oh very cool yeah that's really great uh for me coming in at number three is the mute swan and the mute swan lives in the wetlands it's a bit more costly it does cost uh the uh worm three food wheat and uh of course one of your choice which is kind of there is some flexibility there which is nice uh, it does only hold three eggs but i think the power is just really speaks for itself you choose one to three birds in the wetland, tuck one card from behind your uh, from your hand behind each, and if you tuck at least one card, you draw a new card. So it's just a really great way, especially if you are able to, to uh, be drawing up a lot of cards in the wetland. And the mute swan comes uh, later on, and you're you're getting great card draw. Uh, I could see this just being a real a real point generator. That's cool. Awesome. And by the way, if people listening want to judge whether Cax's choices are better or Mike, my choices are better, please do so in the comments. We'd love to hear your thoughts, especially if it's in my favor. Uh, on to number three for me, I'm doing the, <laughs> <laughs> the red-legged partridge. So this is a grassland bird, and he's got massive egg capacity. Look at that, six eggs. That, so that's awesome. That's, that's really cool. It's only worth one victory point, but its, it's power is to lay one egg on each bird in its column. So that'll be a maximum of three eggs because the column is, of course, up and down rather than left to right. So I love that this card makes you think about how you arrange your birds in your tableau more with high capacity birds in the same column as this one. 
Uh, what's your number two, Cax? Yeah, so my number two, it, it's I, it's a bit situational, but I just uh, I really think uh, it, it's a great uh, card, especially if you're getting good card draw. It's called the uh, it's the common chiff chaff. Plus, I really like the name. I think it's just a fun name. But uh, <laughs> uh, you throw you know throw this one in the wetland, and uh, you drop. Uh, it can be one of any three resources: uh, worm, weed, or cherry. And uh, it's carrying capacity is not stellar at, at three eggs, but you choose one to five birds in this habitat and you tuck one card from your hand behind each. So uh, you, can, you can really, again, similar actually to the previous, uh, it's, uh, it, I'm, I'm kind of getting on these, this, this card tucking bit. Really, it seems mm -hmm. like it, it, the, the European has really ramped up to a new level. That's right. Yeah, it makes that a, an actual viable strategy, and this was actually my second pick too. So thank you for taking that. Right oh no I problem. I, I aim to please. I I want to have the best picks, right? So I got to take yours. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. So I'll switch gears then. I actually had a couple others I was tossing up anyway. So I was thinking about the Eurasian Nut Hatch, and that lets you cash grain, and then you have the option to use it as food. And I've always wanted that part. From the first time I played this game, I always thought cash food could be really cool to use, but uh, that might not work out so well for me because you lose victory points then but instead i'm choosing the eurasian golden oriole which is oh. balanced bird with a yeah it's got the three food cost two habitats a star power which i know you like i do like the star power that's only two eggs but it's got the power to gain an invertebrate or the worms or the berries from the bird feeder when an opponent takes food and that's a nice passive income of food and there's often one or the other of those in the bird feeder so i think this guy could be a really uh, good good pick what's your top pick well, I really like the Adewan's Gull. Uh, it, it, similar to what uh, the Kill DRC would do in the other, uh, in the in, in the in the original, uh, you draw two cards from the deck and you tuck one behind this bird and keep the other. So you're not drawing two cards, but you are actually getting points and getting a card out of it as well. So and, wow. and you're choosing which one you want to keep. So um, at, coming in at a cost of a fish and any resources of your choice, uh, I think the price is right. Whew. Um, that's really good it is in the wetlands so it's a little limiting on your uh, your habitat but uh, i think for what you can do and the points you can get i i think the ha the, the wetland suffered a little bit in the original from being hard to actually get a lot of points right. out of. and yes. uh in this uh, i think the euro edition has really kind of changed that dynamic uh as far as the wetland goes and it can become viable now to actually take it more often uh, even late game you're right, yeah, because you're actually getting victory points and an extra card, so that's really cool. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's awesome. Okay, well, my favorite card is the Eastern Imperial Eagle, and I think it's best played if you've got the Wetland Engine, but I love this Grassland card because of how many points you can get and because it looks awesome. Like, look at that guy. He's so cool. <laughs> that is sweet, yes. That's got to count for something, right? Oh, yeah, big time. <laughs> like he's, he's the coolest-looking bird in the game, but uh, he's worth seven victory points, uh, but on top of that, you can tuck three cards for an extra three points and the added and likely overlooked bonus is that it can be played without a food cost so you can replace those mice with your cards right so uh, this can actually save you a full action and another similar but less cool looking bird is Benelli's Eagle, which actually might be better overall. I think he's got an eight victory point and uh, he's really good too. So and he, he can be played into any habitat. Oh but, yeah, there's uh, another, yeah. That's what the star there, yep. But he just doesn't look as cool as this guy. So You, you had to go, uh, you had to go with uh, the cool looking factor. Thematically, I had to. <laughs> hard, hard to blame you there. <laughs> Awesome. Well, thanks for checking out the cards with me, Cax. Yeah, so that's our top 10 favorite cards. Which ones do you think change the game meta the most? Or which ones do you think are the best? Add your thoughts in the comments below. 